see me? Oh yes. <laughs> if you have not watched my previous video on how to convert a galvanometer to an ammeter, I encourage you to watch that video. Otherwise, you may not understand the steps that I will take in solving this problem. Because this is actually a problem on how to convert a galvanometer to an ammeter. Right? So, I want to encourage you. Go there and watch it. Remember to subscribe, give us some thumbs up, and then put on the bell button for constant notification so that each time something like this comes up, boom, boom, you'll be among those that are notified. Don't forget to share to your friends, share to your network, students, and the rest of them. Alright, let's see. The first thing we need to do is to understand what happens. <laughs> what happens here, that's the first thing. Alright? Okay, let's see. Let's see. Ah, very, very interesting. Look at this. This is the cell. The key, once the key closes, look at the total current flowing. Amazing. Three amps or amperes flows into the entire system. But something interesting happens at this junction. The current splits. Some move into the shunt and the remaining part move into the galvanometer to allow it give full scale deflection. That's what happens. You need to understand that for you to be able to know the steps you're going to use to calculate the value of the shunt that must be connected in service for this to attain or maintain full scale deflection. Are you with me? Are you with me? Stay put and watch to the end. You will learn something today. <laughs> I love you guys. Come on. Now let's see how that happens. First of all, there are small, small identifications we need to do here, right? So let's begin by identifying the current flowing. The current flowing through the galvanometer is 50 milliamp. Why is it 50 milliamp? The word milli means that the galvanometer, as a sensitive device or instrument, measures only small amount of current. Oh, oh, oh. Remember I said detects and measures, okay? Detects and measures small amount of current. That's what you have. That is why you have milliampere. All right? Take note. Now let's see what happens next. We bring it out as IG. IG is current flowing through the ammeter. It's going to be 50, 50 milliamps, right? That's it. But we need to do something here. We need to convert this. We need to convert this. We convert 50 milliamp to ampere. And that gives us 0 0.05 amps. Alright? That's the first thing. The second thing is the total current flowing through the system. The total current flowing is 3 amps. So, total current is, we can call this data. That is the information contained in the question that we are about to solve, right? So total current I is giving us three amps. That's this. We are bringing them out one by one. Look at this. We have the internal resistance. The internal, internal resistance of the galvanometer. That is R. Small R capital G is giving us four ohms. That's this. And this represents the internal resistance of the galvanometer, or so to say, the resistance of the galvanometer, which is very, very small. This resistance is not sufficient to oppose large amount of current if allowed to enter the galvanometer. Of course, it's going to destroy it. Okay, so that is this. So why must this large amount of current, why must this big current value split into shunts? 
that's where, or that is the point where the shunt plays an important role. Okay? The shunt at this junction does not allow the entire current to flow into the galvanometer. If that happens, the galvanometer will be destroyed. So what this chunk does is to divert a large chunk, a large chunk of this to itself, allowing only a small amount, which is 50 milliamp, to flow in. 50 milliamps means just 0 0.05 ampere. Very small. So when that happens, the galvanometer will be able to give full scale deflection. That's it. It deflects to full point of full scale. All right. If we have understood this, now you can see the shunt is unknown. Is unknown, and it must be connected in parallel. Take notes. I want you to understand this. Must be connected in parallel. Very very important. Now we have identified some parameters that will be used to solve and get the value of this. Let's go into action now, quickly. Now, what do we do? We now consider that we need to find the current, how much current flows into the shunt. How much current, what's the value of the current flowing into the shunt? That's the next thing we need to find. And how do we do that? We already know the total current flowing. We already know the current flowing through the galvanometer. We do small subtraction. So current flowing through the short arrow is giving us total current minus minus current flowing through the IG. Flowing through the galvanometer. That's what I mean. Current flowing through the galvanometer. And that is this, which has been converted as 0 0.05 amps. Now we do simple substitution. IR, that's the current flowing through this. Let's find out. Total current is 3, right? Current through IG, current through G is 0 0.05. Look at this. Look at this. All right? We need to do something here. So quickly, it means that IR is equal to 3. How do we do this? Okay, let me simplify for that case. I want you to learn something here. We can do this by, without using a calculator, we can do it this way, all right? Minus 0 0.05, and look at it. Basic way, the fundamental way of teaching a child or a learner. That's what I'm applying here, all right? So let's quickly do that. We, we take one or borrow one from here, put it here the constant, Borrow one from that, 10, put it here, it becomes what? Another 10. So this is 10, this is 10, minus 5 is 5, this is 9, minus 0 remains 9, and I will bring down our point, and this remains 2. Can you see? What does this mean? It means we have found the value of current flowing through the shunt, or the value of current being diverted by the shunt as the current is being measured. Therefore, we have I, R is equal to 2.95 ohms. No, 2.95 amps. All right? Don't mind. Don't mind me. Current flowing is 2.95 amps. That's it. We have found this. Good. Hello, my friends. Come on. If you have... If you have found value in this up to this extent and you have not subscribed, come on. You can just fold your hands, sit, in, sit down there and watch me. Just do something. Patronize this platform, this channel. Give me some thumbs up. Hit the bell button hard for constant notification. Share to your friends, networks and students. That's all. That's all. Learning is very, very important. Back to what we're saying. We have understood this. The next thing is to find the potential difference across this. So let's quickly do that. Potential difference 
across the shards and the potential difference, potential difference across the shards and the potential difference across the internal the resistance of the galvanometer, which is R G. We combine and solve again. <laughs> so what do we do? Potential difference across the shunts can be found by uh, that's PD is equals to across the shunt is going to be I times R. So the current there, the current across the shunt or that flows through the shunt is 2.95. 2.95 times R. We we'll stop at this point for now. That's the potential difference across the shunts out, right? The next thing we need to do is to quickly find the potential difference or potential drop across the internal resistance of the galvanometer. Quickly, we do that. Remember, we found this. Take notes. So what do we do? At this point, we clean this. Since we have made use of it in the first place, right? We may stop somewhere here. So let's find the potential difference across IG, PD across IG, right? So PD across IG, that is potential drop across this governmental resistance. It's very simple. Um, PD is equal to a current flowing to the governmental IG times the value of the governmental right? resistance. Okay? And the current flowing to the governmental is 0.05, then the value of the governmental resistance is just 4. So how do we figure this out? Very simple. We figure this out. This is 5 over 100. 5 over 100 with that calculator, 4 all over 1. Of course, we can solve without using a calculator, right? So what happens is that 5 times 4 is going to give us 20. And on all over 100. Cancel out, cancel out. We left with 2 over 10. And this gives us 0 0.2 volts. Therefore, BD across um, what? RG is equal to 0 0.2 volts. But we're not done yet. Okay? We are not done yet. We need to find the value of R. We must find the value of R. That is, by the time we find the value of R, we are done. So let's quickly do that somewhere here. Okay? The value of R, we now combine or equate. We equate this to that. So we have, at this point, we have 2.95 times R all equal to the value of the RG, which is 0 0.2 volts. Okay? So if we divide through, we divide through by 295. 295 at this point, over 295 at this point, 2.95, this point. Okay? We will end up having the value of the resistance. So this, we cancel this. And we are left with R is equal to 0 0.2 all over 2.95. Alright? Finally, if we figure this out, if we simplify further, we have that 0 0.0678. Almost. This is the value of R. Can you see? Can you see here? Just take a note. I want you to see this clearly. Look at this. Very, very small. Very, very small. 0 0.0678 approximated. Very, very small. What does it mean that the shunt has a very small resistance? And that is what we need for us to be able to convert a galvanometer to an ammeter capable of measuring 50 milliamp at full scale deflection. That's what it means. Otherwise, we won't be able to do so. So the short value must be very, very small. Come on. And that's the end. We have solved 
analyze everything, get the points, and I arrive at the value of the shunt. Come on, you are done. <laughs> See you in my next class. Oh, 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 forget it if I leave. Thank you for watching up to this moment. My next class will be linked there or there. I sign off. Come on. Mm. Okay.